Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Buna Haben Limited Edition Pedro Jimenez Finish. Now I know some of you who in the comments have been saying that you had seen it over my shoulder. And you're correct, it had been there a while. Uh, but today I went ahead and cracked it. So here we go. Uh, as far as, you know, have I had it before? I have. So I kind of knew what I'm getting into. I really enjoyed it the first few times I've had it. Uh, as far as details on it, it's bottled at 54.3%. At 54.3%, it spent a, the first 11 years of its maturation in second fill sherry casks. After that 11 years, they put it into first fill Pedro Jimenez casks for the final three years. That's hence the Pedro Jimenez finish. Now, other thing to note, there wasn't a whole lot to go around. Um, retail pricing on it was roughly about eighty to a hundred dollars somewhere in there i do see it on secondary so if you're on auction sites and stuff like that you can find them there for roughly about 150 to 200 somewhere in there uh, is it worth it possibly um it was a really good value at 80. it's still i think a decent value at 125 150 so um, i would probably still look for it all right but let's go ahead and get to the nosing on it Look at that color. It's got a huge, just copper, deep bronze tone to it. Ugh, golly. It has a ton of Pedro Jimenez characteristics. So it comes off and it's just very sweet aromatically. Sweet like, um, almost like a really rich rum. Like sometimes this can be very, very sweet and, and with a sorghum or a molasses type element underneath. And this definitely has some sorghum to it. Ton of dried fruits, a little raisins going on in here as well. There's a chocolatey note in as well. And I still get a little bit of a little honey, a little smoke underneath there. It's almost like a honey malt characteristic. But I would say that just nosing this, while you do get the, the instant hit of the PX, it doesn't nose as being very singular. So it's not just, uh, just sherry, you know, all by itself. It's the malt characteristic is still coming through on the nose. All right, let's go ahead and get to the taste. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's something. Viscosity is just off the charts. It's high viscosity, very, very viscous. And the warming sensation that I'm getting here on the mid palate. But let's go ahead and get that second sip, right? Okay, hold on. Dried fruits again. A little bit of that raisin element as well. I would almost lean it more towards golden raisins with the dried fruits in there. A little bit of a, a nutty bitterness on the mid palate along with a warming cinnamon note. As it rolls over, you start rolling over into more of a chocolate, uh, kind of a dark chocolate or cocoa powder element kicking in. And then on the very back end here, and the, everything from the front is still carrying throughout. It's still a lot of dried fruits, that golden raisin element. But on the very back end, you start kind of dipping into a little bit of a, a leathery tone to it as well. A little bit of that honeyness that I was picking up on the nose is still reminiscent, coming through on the palate. It's almost like a beeswax, that type thing. Oh, let's try that one more time. As far as it, wow, yeah. As far as how it drinks at 54.3, it's actually very, very nice. I think you could definitely get away with adding a dropper, two or three of water into it because I think the viscosity is not going to fade and the sweetness isn't gonna hurt either. But do you need to? I don't think so. Uh, I actually just enjoy it as is. As a matter of fact, a bottle that I did taste previous to this had been open for several months and it was 
the cinnamon intensity that I'm picking up here on the mid palate, that really warming cinnamon, was actually pretty subdued, so it just kind of came off very, very big and round and um, very enjoyable. But this is fantastic right here as it is. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a, the malt characteristic uh, of Bunahaben still comes through in this whiskey. That's the one thing that I'm kind of really dr amazed at is that it's not uh, just, you know, sherry driven. You know, sometimes uh, some Glendronic and Kavalon can do such heavy finishes that they're just driven that way. And you will lose a little bit of that uh, distillery characteristic. But the Bunahaben uh, malt characteristic is definitely still in this glass. That wisp of smoke, uh, that that chocolatey note is almost like it's got a little bit of a like a sea salt chocolate to it because it does give you a little bit of a briny characteristic on the very back end here. Now I'm still chewing on it, but it is just fantastic complexity with the dried fruits, chocolate, leather, and that type of uh, combination just on top of the great Bunahaman profile is fantastic. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching. Uh, keep leaving those great comments. And of course, you can always follow me at Liquor Hound on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you and cheers.